On this edition of Veterans Health Watch, we'll learn about the eligibility criteria and the enrollment process for veterans to receive VA health care. We'll also learn how the VA is expanding services to veterans with its clinic-based telehealth program, and we'll visit the pharmacy service at the Baltimore VA Medical Center. Welcome to Veterans Health Watch, a program sponsored by the Veterans Affairs Maryland Healthcare System that provides the latest health and benefits information for Maryland's veterans, their family members, and the local community. I'm David Edwards. And I'm Kenya Griffin. David, I'm sure many of our veterans are watching the show today who believe maybe they're not eligible for VA health care services or think that only veterans who have been injured in combat are eligible for VA health care services. So joining us to clarify VA eligibility and enrollment is Celestine Jennings, the Chief of Ambulatory Care and Processing at the Baltimore VA Medical Center. Celestine, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So Celestine, what veterans are eligible for VA health care services? Well, a veteran is a person who served active duty military, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, and was discharged with a, other than dishonorable discharge. And Celestine, I know there are probably lots of um, people watching today's show who served in the National Guard or might have been a reservist. And they're probably wondering the same question. Are they eligible for VA health care? Those veterans are eligible only if they were called to active duty by federal order and they served the full term that they were called. Veterans who have served for training only are not eligible. So how can a veteran start the enrollment process for VA health care services? Well, there are three ways that a veteran can enroll. The first way is they can come in to the local VAs or the community outpatient clinics. Um, they would need their ID and their DD-214 and they can sit down with someone and they will help them enroll. The second way is online at maryland.va.gov, click on become a patient, or they can call us at 1-800-463-6295, extension 7324, and we will mail you out an enrollment application. And so, Celestine, I understand that part of the enrollment application includes a financial assessment. What is the purpose for um, a veteran having to include that information as part of the enrollment process? Well, the financial assessment determines eligibility. It determines if the veteran pays a copay for outpatient treatment, medication, and it also determines eligibility for mileage for patient travel. And how often does a veteran have to update this financial information? It's annual. So if something happens in the meantime in between having that annual time that they have to update their financial information, such as a job loss, what should a veteran do then or what, what's available? If a veteran has a job loss or his wife, his spouse has a job loss and their income changed dramatically, the veteran is entitled to apply for a hardship. And a hardship takes care of any future bills that they may occur. They're also entitled, they may be entitled to file for a waiver, which takes care of past medication bills. Great. So Celestine, after a veteran has sent in their application, whether online or mailed it in or left it at an outpatient clinic or VA medical center, how do they know that they're eligible for VA health care and that what priority group they would have ended up in? Well, the local VA where the veteran has come in to register or enroll will actually send out a letter to the veteran informing them that they have been enrolled in which priority group um, they would fall into and they actually give them the information of where to call to schedule their first primary care appointment. After that and roughly about two weeks later they receive another letter from our health care eligibility center in Atlanta. And you, you touched on this a little bit travel benefits. I know the VA offers travel reimbursement benefits for veterans who are eligible for that service who are coming to and from clinic appointments. So can you tell us a little bit more about that service and what veterans need to know? 
Well, some patients traveling to the hospital for their clinic appointments are eligible for mileage. Um, patients such as 30% or more service connected, less than 30% if they're coming for their service connected disability or if they have a low income. We encourage patients to stop past the travel office in Baltimore or at your community outpatient clinic and inquire with your ID. Um, you should collect mileage at the time of your appointment or you have 30 days, within 30 days of your appointment to collect mileage. Celestine, earlier you mentioned co-payments. Um, what uh, payments do, do veterans have to make for their VA health care and are they required to pay the deductibles that their insurance carrier may still require of them for any of their VA health care? Some veterans do have an outpatient copay of $15 for primary care, $50 for specialty. We do encourage the veterans to try to schedule more than one appointment on the same day. Medication for 30 day supply is eight or $9 according to their eligibility. And we do have additional costs for inpatient stay and you can find that on our website at MarylandVA.gov. How about the deductibles for veterans who have their own outside insurance? Are they required to pay um, their deductibles to their insurance company? Those veterans are required to pay the co-pays that I just mentioned. Okay. Celestine, you briefly mentioned priority groups. Could you explain that a little more? Well, priority groups were just established to determine eligibility with one being the um, priority group for service-connected veterans and eight being the lowest priority group, which are veterans with high-end income. Celestine, after a veteran has enrolled for VA health care and they're found eligible to receive VA health care, what services are they entitled to receive? The VA offers a wide range of health care, including inpatient, outpatient, and specialty care. Celestine, how could a veteran learn more about VA eligibility and enrollment? To learn more about VA eligibility and enrollment, they can go to our website at maryland.va.gov or they can call us at 1-800-463-6295 extension 7324 and someone in the enrollment center will be more than happy to help them. Celestine, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm sure our viewing audience has learned a lot about the eligibility and enrollment requirements for VA health care as well as the services that are offered to veterans throughout the state. So thank you for being here. Thank you. We're going to take a short break, but when we return, we'll be talking about clinic-based telehealth programs. So come back. The VA Maryland healthcare system is a great system. It's not your grandfather's VA. We are a progressive and dynamic healthcare system. And it's our mission to provide the highest quality healthcare to our veteran heroes. Great programs, great technology, great staff. And it's just touching to see how everybody just come together as one. We do what we can to see that they get the best service. It's a family. Nobody takes better care of you than family. Those veterans who don't enroll in care, many times if you ask them if they're a vet, they'll say, no, but I did serve in the military. Anyone that made that commitment to put your life on the line for others is a veteran. The system is very accessible. For instance, enrollment. We have three ways to enroll. You can enroll online, you can physically go into the VA and enroll, or you can telephone to enroll. It doesn't cost anything to enroll. All it takes is, is a few minutes of your time and a copy of your DD-214. That's all you need. I'm a veteran myself, and I tell the family, when you entrust the care of your loved one to me, you can go home safe and very at ease. The best thing that you can do is just come in and apply. Without a doubt, any veteran definitely owes it to themselves to enroll. You know, your health and well-being is priceless. Welcome back to Veterans Health Watch. We're now joined by Courtney Becker Howe, who's the Facility Telehealth Coordinator at the Baltimore VA Medical Center, to talk about the new clinic-based telehealth program. Courtney, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, I'm happy to be here. Well, why don't we get started by having you give us an overview of what exactly is clinic-based telehealth? Sure, well, telehealth is sometimes also called telemedicine, and it just refers to care that is delivered virtually. And clinic-based means what it sounds like. Uh, it's care that's occurring with a patient who's in an outpatient or an inpatient setting. 
Clinic-based telehealth, there's really two different kinds. Uh, one is what we call clinical video telehealth, or CVT. And that is when there's a live or synchronous connection between a patient and a provider. And that's done over a live video stream. So the patient will be at his or her local clinic, and the provider may be at a medical center in another location, but they're still able to communicate via video and have an appointment. The other type of clinic-based telehealth is store and forward telehealth, also called SFT. And this is where there's not a live connection between a patient and provider, but the patient can still go to his or her local clinic and their services will be delivered by imaging by a telehealth technician. And the images are then later forwarded to the provider who reviews the images and makes a diagnosis or recommendations based on what he sees. So why is this initiative so important to the VA Maryland healthcare system? Well, one of the VA's main priorities for its 21st century initiatives is really to enhance and improve access to care for our veterans, to make it more convenient and easy for them to get the care they need when they need it. Uh, this initiative plays right into that. It's so important for veterans to be able to access specialty services from their local clinic. And really the goal of telehealth is to provide the right care in the right place at the right time. And through these live and not live services that I just described, it really allows our veterans to be able to access specialty care at their local clinic that they would normally have to travel to a medical center in order to obtain. Courtney, in a past episode of Veterans Health Watch, we did a feature on home telehealth. Can you tell us about the difference between to home telehealth and clinic-based telehealth? Sure. Well, it is what it sounds like, but in a little more detail, uh, home telehealth occurs with patients who are in their homes. That's typically reserved for veterans who have chronic disease that needs to be managed, such as diabetes or heart failure or congestive heart failure, or they might have a weight management need that needs to be uh, tracked on a daily basis. Veterans who are enrolled in the home telehealth program enter their health data on a daily basis with a health monitor in their home. And they work with their case manager over the phone, but there isn't necessarily a live video connection. Versus the clinic-based telehealth program, which is where the patient is actually accessing their local clinic or they might be an inpatient in order to receive the care. And it's not a long-term program. They may use clinical video telehealth or store and forward just once, or it may become something they use regularly. But it's just another way to receive the specialty care appointments they would normally receive. Without having to drive long distances exactly. to get them. Exactly. So tell us a little bit more about the services you provide through clinical video and store and forward. Sure. Well, store and forward telehealth, as I mentioned before, is a type of imaging we do. Uh, there's two types of store and forward telehealth. One is teleretinal imaging, and this is a type of imaging we do to screen for diabetic retinopathy. Uh, which is a type of damage that can occur to patients' eyes, uh, either if they have a diagnosis of diabetes, and sometimes patients who are on certain steroid medications or other medication regimens may experience the same kind of symptoms. So this is a type of screening where we, we, we actually take pictures of the inside of the eye, and then those images are forwarded to an optometrist who later reviews the images and checks for any retinopathy or bleeding in the eyes and then sends the results back to the patient. The other type of store and forward imaging we do is teledermatology. And this is a patient may present uh, for a primary care appointment and he may have uh, a lesion that's suspicious or a rash or just any skin condition that could be bothersome. This is a very convenient service for our patients because if the teledermatology imager is available in the clinic, the patient can be imaged right there for his or her dermatology condition. Those images then are forwarded to a dermatologist who will review them and will provide recommendations back to the primary care provider. Um, and this is very convenient because it can help eliminate extra visits to dermatology and may el completely eliminate the need for them to see dermatology at all because the condition may be able to be resolved just based on the images that the dermatologist can see. And for clinical video telehealth, there's a wide range of service. Really almost any service can be done via clinical video telehealth. Some examples of clinics we do a lot, um, several mental health services we offer via clinical video telehealth, both one-on-one -on -one and group counseling we offer over live video. There's also a one-on-one -on -one pharmacy clinic we offer to our patients who need pharmaceutical counseling and follow-up with uh, a medication. We also offer nutrition counseling one-on-one -on -one and in group settings. Some of our neurology clinics, including MS, uh, multiple sclerosis, and epilepsy, we offer clinics one-on-one -on -one for those. Also hepatitis C, and uh, as you can see, there's just a huge range of possibilities. Almost any specialty appointment can be done via clinical video. And Courtney, what veterans could benefit from clinic-based telehealth programs? Well, it's really, as I described, there's so many different options. It's really appropriate for almost any 
uh, veteran we have. But really the veterans who benefit the most are veterans who are a long distance from the medical center. For example, uh, our patients who live on the Eastern Shore who access their primary care through the Cambridge or Pocomoke City outpatient clinics. Some of these patients may also have uh, unreliable transportation or may have difficult ac difficulty accessing transportation for their appointments. So these patients do tend to really enjoy uh, using the telehealth. It's also convenient even for patients who aren't that far from the medical center, but patients who are required to come to the medical center every six to eight weeks, for example, for follow-up or even more often, may find it much more convenient to access that care via their local clinic rather than having to make a trip downtown to the hospital for these services. But the most important thing to note is really that clinic-based telehealth is patient-driven. Patients can opt in or opt out at any time. They are not required to use the services. We strongly encourage them to use it whenever they're able. But it's really up to the patient if it's something they want to try and if it's something they want to continue using. And it sounds really cutting edge. So what can a veteran expect to encounter when he or she comes in for a clinic-based telehealth appointment? Well, it's, I think the, the first time everyone does it is, is a little unusual because you're used to just coming in and sitting in a room with your doctor and seeing them in the same room with you. But one thing that people do seem to like is there is always going to be someone there with you. And when the, it's telehealth and the provider's at another location, we do have telehealth technicians who work at the local clinics. So whether it's a store and forward appointment and you're just coming for imaging or a clinical video appointment where you're actually going to interact live with your provider, the telehealth technician is there to receive you for the appointment, do vitals just like they usually would if you need blood pressure, weight, anything done before the appointment. If there's an exam component, such as for our multiple sclerosis clinic, for example, the tech will actually be with the patient throughout uh, conducting the exam with the provider. Um, and for store and forward, the technician actually acts as the imager, so they would be doing either the dermatology or retinal imaging in that case. And they would also close out the appointment and schedule future needs as well. Courtney, are there any costs associated with clinic-based telehealth? And also, can you tell our viewing audience where is this unique service available for veterans to, to get this care? Sure, well, telehealth does not change the cost structure at all. So if a <clears throat> patient is uh, required to pay a co-payment for a visit, that would still apply, but it wouldn't be any higher or lower. The telehealth is just another way of receiving the same type of care. Um, in fact, it sometimes can be cheaper for patients because if, for example, if they come in for a primary care appointment, let's say they need their dermatology imaging done while they're there, that would then fall under the primary care appointment and could potentially avoid them having to pay a specialty care copay at a later time. Also, the clinic-based telehealth we offer at all of our outpatient clinic locations, uh, Fort Howard, Lock Raven, Glen Burnie, Pocomoke City, Cambridge, and our new clinic at Fort Meade as well. We'll be offering telehealth there. Also at the Perry Point Medical Centers, and even at the Baltimore Medical Center, even though most of the providers are there, we do offer our store and forward imaging there because it can still be a great convenience for patients who are there for primary care appointments. Courtney, you've shared a lot of information, but how can a veteran learn more about the clinic-based telehealth program? A veteran can go on www.telehealth.va.gov, which is the VA's telehealth site for its patients and people interested in learning more about the telehealth technologies offered at VA. They can contact us in the office at 410-605-7567. We'd be happy to discuss more in detail with them. And we also encourage uh, veteran patients or their family members, if they're interested in learning more about telehealth, the next time they're at clinic or with a provider, feel free to ask them if it's a service they offer and so they can learn more about it. Courtney, thank you so much for joining us today. This is really exciting technology, and I'm sure our veterans are really excited to ask their primary care provider more about this new service. So thanks for being here. Thank you very much. We're going to take a break right now, but when we come back, we'll be at the Baltimore VA Medical Center learning about the VA's pharmacy program. So stay tuned. The VA Maryland Healthcare System is the overall healthcare system for veterans in the state of Maryland. We have three inpatient locations as well as six community-based outpatient clinics. In a treatment that I've received from the Maryland VA healthcare system, it's been top-notch, definitely cutting edge. I think what makes the VA innovative is constantly exploring new ways to become more efficient and more effective. We were the first hospital in the world to make the transition from film-based radiology to filmless radiology. We measure everything we do. 
we are always keeping track of our ability to deliver uh, the standard of medical care to all our patients. We have the most committed, diverse, and caring group of professionals. You know, a lot of us have served in the services. These guys and these ladies, I mean, they're everything to us. And there's nothing I would not do for them. I don't know what it's like. I don't know what it's like to I don't know what it's like to be in a war. I don't know what it's like. I don't know what it's like to be, to be shot at. To be shot at. To be put in harm's way. To put my life on the line. I don't know what it's like. But I do know no one comes back the same. No matter how tough you are, how, how brave, how patriotic, anybody can get hurt. And not just physically hurt. If you're a service member or in a military family and you're feeling hopeless, you're not alone. Please call this number. It's confidential and free. Your family needs you. We need you. Thank you for your service. A lot of women veterans don't realize that the VA is here to take care of them. They served and they deserve the best health care that there is. The Women Veterans Program has been redesigned to meet the needs of the women veterans. Female veterans receive just as good a care as men because they're focused more on us now. We want them to come here, we want them to feel welcomed, and we want them to know that we are capable and willing to take care of them. Welcome back to Veterans Health Watch. I'm Michael Rubin, and joining me here at the VA Maryland Healthcare Systems Pharmacy is Ronald Lilly, the Associate Chief. Welcome, Ron. Uh, thank you, Michael. Well, um, in a previous segment, we had talked about enrollment and eligibility. So I'm assuming that once a veteran's enrolled, that they're automatically eligible for pharmacy services? Well, Michael, the pharmacy services are a part of the overall picture. Uh, when the patient is enrolled, they'll have a primary care provider who's responsible for coordinating their care, uh, referring them out to any specialist, and the pharmacy services is just a part of that whole package. Okay. An important question I'm sure viewers will want to know, what are the costs? Well, in terms of costs, there is a copay that applies to some of our patients, and that would be $8 per 30-day supply of medication. Mm -hmm. However, there are different categories, such as patients that are service-connected, and any patient that's service-connected 50% or greater would not have any copays, uh, regardless of the service that they're receiving from us. Okay. Now, a lot of our veterans utilize private doctors. Um, what happens when a, a veteran has a script from a private doctor? Can they fill it here in the pharmacy? Everything goes to the primary care provider. Uh, the pharmacy only fills prescriptions for VA providers. Mm -hmm. So if a patient actually has an outside uh, mm -hmm. doctor that they're seeing and they have prescriptions that are prescribed by them, what they should do is bring that information into the primary care provider. Mm -hmm. The primary care provider will look at that medication compared to what we have on our list of drugs that we carry, and they would make an appropriate clinical decision as to whether the patient would be switched to something we have, maintained on the same medication, or if there was some other uh, decision that needed to be made. You, you, yeah, I actually brought up my next question, which is um, this formula. I know it's set by, by the nationally it's set, but um, what if a veteran medically requires something that's not on the formulary? What happens? Well, our formula is very similar to any other insurance plan. It's actually a list of all the drugs that we do carry and have available. Um, there are thousands and thousands of drugs and no health plan or pharmacy carries every single drug that there is, sure. but we have representative drugs from each class. Um, and with that, the providers would select uh, the appropriate drug from that particular class. If it's something that they need that falls outside of that, we do have a method whereby a provider can actually request, it's called a non-formulary consult, and they can actually make a clinical justification for something that they need that may be specially ordered for that patient. Okay. Now that, we, you know, prescriptions are ordered, what mechanisms are in place uh, in the VA Maryland healthcare system to ensure that there's quality controls, that veterans receive the medications they're supposed to receive? Oh, yeah, it all starts with a clinical pharmacist. When the patient comes in to receive services, they'll sit down with them, go over the medications, uh, any potential side effects or interactions with other medications that might exist, as well as any foods they're um, taking. Um, in addition to that, they'll ask them any pertinent questions, clinical questions that could go into that whole uh, formula. In addition to that, we do use cutting edge technology, barcode, barcoding um, in terms of verifying the correct medication uh, for the right patient at the right time. Um, and so it, it's a pretty extensive uh, tracking system that we do utilize in addition to our, our he, the human aspect. Okay, in addition to those quality controls, um, what kind of assistance do the pharmacists provide to the patients in terms of, I, I assume, education? 
Yeah, in, in terms of how they utilize their medications to ensure that they are using those as intended mm -hmm. uh, by their provider. And again, answering any questions, looking over the overall picture, if there's any precautions that the patients need to be aware of, or if there's any teaching such as with an inhaler or some type of device that they would need to know or be proficient in. Ron, in addition to the extensive outpatient services that the VA Maryland healthcare system has, they also offer a lot of specialty programs and services uh, like cardiology, neurology, um, chemotherapy. Can you talk to us about whether or not veterans can have those type of specialty medications filled here in the VA? Of course, as I mentioned earlier, everything is, uh, goes through the primary care provider. They coordinate all the care if it's a specialist, outside specialist as well as one within our system. Uh, we do have a number of specialty areas. One area is our clean room where we make IV admixtures, chemotherapeutic items, and that's in a uh, temperature controlled, air quality controlled room it requires gowning um, and, and sort of apparatus that's utilized to ensure that we provide um, outstanding care to our patients in a quality fashion. In addition to that, we do have a narcotics vault where we uh, dispense controlled substances and that supports both our outpatient as well as our inpatient and our nursing home facilities. I'm, I'm glad you brought up inpatient. Um, can you talk to us about the inpatient pharmacy services that we have? And the inpatient pharmacy services of course are for those patients that are admitted to our institution and stay overnight whether it's in our long-term care facility or here in the acute care facility. Uh, we utilize again uh, technology in terms of tracking the medication from the time it's packaged, mm -hmm. utilizing barcoding, um, all the way through the time that it's administered to the patient by the nurse to ensure that we do have accuracy in the doses that are being delivered to our patients. Ron, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to talk with us about the pharmacy services available here at the VA Maryland Healthcare System and allowing us behind the scenes to look at the state-of-the-art system that we have in place to ensure safe handling and distribution of the medications. So thank you again. Pleasure is all mine, Michael. And now back to the studio. Thanks, Michael, for that report from the pharmacy at the Baltimore VA Medical Center. That wraps up another edition of Veterans Health Watch. If you have questions about today's show, or you'd like to make suggestions for future topics, please contact us at 1-800-463-6295, extension 7101. You can also visit us on the internet and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And remember, if you are a veteran or you know a veteran who is not using the VA Maryland Healthcare System, please call us at 1-800-463-6295, extension 7324, visit us on the web, or come to one of our medical centers. We'd love to serve you. I was homeless with a bag of clothes two, over two years ago. We have outreach workers, uh, licensed uh, social workers that go out into the community um, and they provide um, assessment, referral, case management services to our homeless veterans. We provide almost anything that the, the veteran needs in order to try and get him back off the street and back into society. And I call my mom every day and she hears it in my voice. She says, you're alive now and you're living. These people, from a nurse to the guy mopping the floors, they all have one thing in common. They save our lives. I work my incentive therapy program, working in a mayor room. I feel like I am somebody now. Um, it's hard for me to um, ask for help sometimes. Taking the buses around there, and I've seen these homeless vets. And there's help. There's always help. Did you know that Department of Veterans Affairs provides physical and mental health care for over 8 million veterans? Hi, I'm Natalie Dell. I may be an Olympic medal winner, but I know that real champions are those who have served this country. And VA knows that too. As a VA employee, I've seen the challenges our veterans face. I'm honored to be part of a team that supports veterans in achieving fuller, richer lives, and I invite you to join us in this rewarding experience. If you're a mental health provider, I urge you to visit vacareers.va.gov. If a veteran is experiencing any type of mental health problems, they should realize that they're not alone. One of the things that we can really help with is kind of giving them the education to help them face the issues. Hiding and keeping secrets was the very thing that was keeping me sicker. 
trust me, you're not by yourself. If no more than to know that I'm in that same category. Saved my marriage. Made me feel like a person again. I couldn't have gotten this far without the VA.